He loved the water, but unfortunately, it became his killer. 19-year-old Lucas Ransom was bodyboarding off the Northern California coast when something brutal dragged him underwater, challenging him to a race against death. Hit like and subscribe. This is Fierce. The California sun glimmered off the calm waves of Lompoc Surf Beach, a surfer's and beachgoer's haven tucked away on the grounds of Vandenberg Air Force Base on what appeared to be a perfect October day in 2010. Yet this peace was short-lived as Lucas Ransom and Matthew Garcia experienced a horrific incident that would change their lives forever. Along with his friend Matthew Garcia, Lucas, a chemical engineering student at the University of California, Santa Barbara, had set out on a journey around the West Coast. They went to a beach they had never been to before, lured in by the prospect of perfect waves, not realizing the danger that waited beneath the tempting turquoise surface. Lucas had these bright, sparkling eyes and a smile that could light up a room. He just loved living life to the fullest. This love for life and aquatic activities manifested in Lucas's accomplishments. He became a skilled swimmer, a competitive water polo player, and a certified lifeguard. Saving lives wasn't just a profession for Lucas, it was a testament to his innate kindness and desire to help others. So much so that in 2007, he was honored by the city of Murrieta for saving a young boy's life at a community pool. Lucas was also a promising chemical engineering student at the University of California, Santa Barbara. It had been a lifelong dream of his to continue his studies, but oftentimes when he was asked about college, he kept a realistic attitude. He knew his parents' financial situation wasn't favorable, so he lowered his expectations of ever going to a renowned university. When they finally set him down for a talk and assured him that they would do anything possible for him to continue his studies and accomplish his biggest dreams yet, he simply couldn't believe it. So two years later, when he was a junior studying chemical engineering, he took advantage of a rare free day in his schedule and asked his friend Matthew if he wanted to go bodyboarding with him. They decided upon the location, Lompoc Surf Beach, located northwest of Los Angeles on Vandenberg Air Force Base a beach he had never visited before, let alone surf on its waves. Despite his mother's attempts that morning to persuade him to go to a more familiar beach, he simply wouldn't budge. He was that stubborn. With an easygoing, I'll be fine, Mom, I'll call you when I get back, unbeknownst to him, Lucas embarked on what would become his final journey on Earth. The morning was incredibly beautiful, with calm waves and clear skies. The initial cold feeling against Lucas's skin dissolved in an instant as adrenaline started pumping through his veins. The beach was relatively empty, but he was still ready to put on a show. When Lucas reached knee-deep water, he finally put on his fins, the ones he never left home without. He loved them as they helped him kick the water with higher speed, propelling him onto the best waves possible. Matthew caught up with him and they started to look out for whitewater waves. Matthew was right behind him. Initially, the wave wasn't looking too big, but as Lucas got closer and closer, he realized he had miscalculated. No worries, he thought, nothing I have never done before. Beneath the turquoise waters, an almost 20-foot-long shark was lurking, ready to attack. Right before jumping onto the wave, Lucas felt something against his bodyboard, pushing it with immense force. As he held onto the board to steady himself, he felt something grab his leg. A pain like he had never felt before paralyzed his entire body. He felt like something was tracing shards of glass on his leg, ripping apart his wetsuit and leaving behind deep, deep wounds. In a second, Lucas was dragged underwater and he finally saw his attacker. An almost 20-foot shark, most probably a great white. His attack was swift and smooth, almost ninja-like but most importantly, fierce. Lucas's friend Matthew watched him from afar, terrified. Help me, help, shouted Lucas. The next second, Matthew snapped out of his paralyzed state and swam toward his friend with lightning speed. Lucas's screams pierced the air as the shark clamped his jaws onto his left leg, dragging him under the red-colored water over and over again in an attempt to stop Lucas's efforts to escape its ferocious bite. 
The 19-year-old tried to hit the shark with his hands and arms, but the pain was so bad he could barely stay afloat. His tears, mixed with salt water, clouded his vision. He felt his lungs on fire as it got harder and harder to breathe. His bodyboard was floating next to him, with an almost 13-inch chunk missing, the site where the shark sank its teeth first. The calm waves of that morning turned hectic, and Lucas grew too tired to fight the ocean's depths. Matthew's scared voice was ringing in his ears, but nothing could beat the need he felt to rest his eyes just a bit. When he finally reached him, Matthew thought his friend was still alive. He went underwater, looking at the damage the shark had done. Lucas was missing a big chunk of his left leg. The shark was missing too. Matthew grabbed Lucas, flipped him over on his back, and hooked him under the arms. He tried to rest Lucas on his red bodyboard in order to apply chest compressions, but he realized he couldn't help him if they were still in the water. There was also the danger of being attacked again. Matthew dragged Lucas onto the shore, but his efforts to save him were all in vain. As he waited for paramedics to arrive, he simply looked at the lifeless body of his friend and at the bitten body board next to him. The weird feeling that this day was too perfect to be real and that he couldn't shake that morning came true. When emergency services arrived at the beach, there was nothing left to be done. Lucas suffered extensive injuries, lost a massive amount of blood, and didn't respond to CPR. He was dead. The aftermath was pure chaos. Searchers tried to look for his lost leg under the water, but to no avail. The authorities even searched for the shark, closing down three beaches again with no success. Lucas's family was shattered. His mother's intuition wasn't wrong, but it was too late for regrets. Lucas probably didn't regret catching one last wave that Friday, so there was nothing left but to celebrate his life and his accomplishments. In the wake of his death, his family, along with the University of California, Santa Barbara, granted two students scholarships in his memory. His parents knew how much studying to become a chemical engineer meant for Lucas, so they wanted his dream to live on. Several shark accidents stained the California coast, some more than others, but Lucas Ransom, being so young and cheerful and looking forward to the rest of his adventurous life, will probably remain the most devastating one yet.